Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to set up Udo with your PostgreSQL with Nginx and also PG Admin 4 uh, using Docker. Now I've, I did show another video which was kind of like ended up being about two hours long if you added the two together. So I'm just going to run through it today and try and make it a lot quicker for you. So I'll have a lot more uh, people kind of like looking at the video and touching it and responding rather than getting about about two or three percent through and thinking i've not got two hours to watch this video all right so if you are using docker uh, you need to make sure that you've got docker installed okay so you can see here um I, i've got docker, in, ooh, docker installed on linux okay and i'm using version 20.10.7 and I've also got Docker Compose installed as well, okay, because that's what we're going to need. That's going to be helpful for us. Um, I'm using Manjaro, but you can use your Docker um, desktop for Windows and, and install it that way. So if you just look at videos on how to get Docker installed on, on Linux and or Windows, then we can proceed with the with the actual video itself. Right, so if I just clear that out, first thing I'd need to do um, is actually go in and set myself up as a root user. Okay, so I'm knowing that this is root user, and I'm going to change my directory to um, opt. Now you can see that I've got some folders in here, and here's a file I've been working on. So you would kind of you would make a directory, as as I've done there. I called it Udo 14. Okay, make the directory and then you would go into the actual folder itself. Now you can see I've got some folders and files set up there. So if I list the stuff, yeah, I've created these so that they've all got root user access. Okay, and I've created a Docker Compose file there. Now I'm using a code builder um, called um, Visual Studio Code, you can get it for Linux, Mac and also Windows, but go ahead and get that installed. So I'm actually just going to run the code. And that will open that up. So and I'm opening it up as a root user, OK, uh, even though it says it's not recommended that you do, but I am because I'm in the roots of my Linux system. OK, so you can see that I've got this Docker Compose file there. OK, I'll open that folder 14. That's cool. Right, let me just close off some of these. Okay, so this is the crux of everything that's going on. So we first off need to create like a Docker Compose file. So, so to do that in the browser here, you would click on there and then put in your new file and call it Docker Compose .yaml. All right. Um, and let me, just, let me just zoom in there so you can see what's going on. Right. So I've created a Docker Compose file. Now, if you don't know what a Docker Compose file is, it's a, a file that allow, allows Docker to read so that it can go in and set up some containers and stuff for you. So I'm creating a stack. So I'll just put the dash stack at the end of everything there. So I've got Udo, I've got my database, I've got PG Admin and nginx which is for my proxy server all right so first off you would need to type in the the um docker version or docker composed version i just put three three point one oh, three point eight it doesn't really matter what whatever version that you need to use i think it's worked before for me with 2.4 um so I'll put with that, but I do know that the actual Docker file works with 3.1, okay? But you need to go and look and see what Docker Compose version you'd need if you're using that particular syntax, okay? Because it does change as versions go on. And then you've got the services running, which are these here. Okay, so you type in services, but you need to make sure that you've got this space in, right? So there's two spaces between there, two spaces between there two spaces between there and so on and so forth as it cascades in right so we keep it all in line 
So I start off by calling my um, container on my image, you do stack, and I also echo it there as well as a container name. Now you see here below that I've actually got a, a build in there, which is for a Docker file. Now you can see here I've got a folder called Docker file, which is where the context goes. Okay. Uh, so if I open that up, you can see I've actually got an Udo Docker file. So if I open that, you can see there that I'm actually calling from the latest version of Udo. I want to add a root user in there. Okay. Uh, the reason why is because I want to run some additional commands and stuff. So if you've got any third party apps that require um, additional bits of uh, Python code or, or any, any other kind of dependency to run, you can then go into the actual Docker container and add those dependencies rather than actually tearing everything down and rebuilding stuff. OK, so that's what that's for. So it's just a simple little file there. So once you've done that, you then need to add in the volumes. Um, and what I mean by that is that on your host side, so on your host machine where, where I'm actually building this, inside your, your project folder or your Docker project folder, I've got these additional folders. I've got add-ons extra. So anything that I put into there, being the third-party apps, will be mounted on the container side inside Udo uh, add-ons extra okay um, and same for the Udo configuration okay so I've got a, a configuration file there for Udo right, which I've set up change that um, okay so I've got that set there that's the Udo configuration file. All right. Uh, you probably won't need all of this information in here, but I've just gone ahead and got a default um, Udo configuration file and just popped it in and changed the bits and pieces that I want. So the main bits that I want to change is to do with the database host, where where's the database hosted, and you put in there the actual container name for the host. If you leave the uh, database name as false, it will uh, when it starts off, it will ask you to create a database, and you've got passwords and your port number. Okay, um, five four three two is the default port. Okay, and your your um, database user in there. All the other bits and pieces of information in there is everything to do with like. Uh, anything sort of like call, calling out for sort of like mem limited memory and things like that and see CPU time in real time right? but you can look that information up yourself like I say you don't need that to, to just run it as a test but if you're running in production then you're going to need that sort of information up there All right. so that's that there so underneath that we've then got a promiscuous uh, volume in there which kind of like just picks up all of the um, log files for that particular container so you can actually read through the logs at any time so if anything did happen to your Udo server container then you could um, go into the Udo web, web data volume and read the information there to see what's going on. Underneath that we assign a port to it 8069 is the default port so anything on the left side is your host side anything on the right side of the colon is your container port okay so by default, you do is that there. And we're saying here that it depends on the database stack here. So if the database isn't running, then Udo is not going to run. OK, and then we set this to restart always. And what I mean by that is like if the if your host machine that's hosting your Docker container shuts down, when you restart it, it will automatically restart the server, the service there for you. Okay, so let's have a look at the database stack now. You can see there that I'm used uh, set my container name up, and I've also set it up for the, the latest version of Postgres. Um, because because we're using UV14, I just put latest in there. But you can set the version number on there if you want to. But you need to go away and have a look at the Docker Hub information. What I mean by that, if we go over to the, 
the Docker Hub and I put in there to PostgreSQL. You can see there, if we click in here, it's going to show you um, the, the, the tags and the latest tag is, is latest. Okay, and then you've got Duster 9.6. 9.6 9.6 so there's various different versions out there all right but i always go for the latest one that was updated four days ago as was buster but i don't know what version that's actually seeing that okay um they used to have like version 12 and 13 and stuff in there but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore okay Again, we're going to set up a promiscuous volume there so that we can attach ourselves to the actual information that's inside our container for, for the actual log file. You can see there that we've echoed it here as well underneath the environment. Right. Again, we can set up our ports. 5432 is the default port for PostgreSQL to run on. If you wanted to run PostgreSQL on a different port because you had multiple databases running, you can actually change that to what you want. And then you can actually unhatch this command and put in the, I want to force port 5433. And then if you didn't put that in there, it will always default to 5432. Underneath that, I've got the about the environment setup so we've got postgres data the password username and database and we always want it to restart uh, the computer restarts itself Oops. next bit is the pg admin okay so i'm na naming it pg admin stack i'm keeping it all at all at, calling it all stack because it's, it's all part of the same thing you can you can call it whatever you want there just to see what containers are related to what all right um there i'm setting the uh, image this time and this is where it pulls from okay this is the, um, from the docker hub um pulling version 5.4 and then a promiscuous volume there for pg admin data on ports um 8080 rather than port 80 because nginx will use port 80 okay on the host side you by all means you can put it on that side so it will pull it through so if we're calling on port 80880 on the host side it will look through to the container and go ah container's got it on port 80 let's link them two together down below you've got this here where we're actually linking the database together with the pgsql server of um, pg admin just so that they can talk to one another so that's important that you put that in there and then below that we've got the environmental setups for um, your default email address password and the port that it listens to on the container you can say here where it depends on it depends on the database stack running and we always want it to restart nginx we're setting up a container name here for nginx nginx stack we're calling it and we're running a build against it so when we look in the context of docker file so we look in the docker file folder we can see we've got an nginx.docker file where we can open that up so we're looking at the latest version of nginx um, we're running a root user against it because we need to add some additional components for like cert bot for the um, let's encrypt SSL certification for your domain name. Okay. So that's what we need there. Underneath that, we've got the ports. Oh, sorry. Underneath that, we've got the volume for the Nginx configuration because you want to be able to configure your database. All right. Uh, so you uh, configure Udo to run off of your domain name. Okay, that's my domain name there. So you can go away and get a domain name registered and you can assign an IP address against that. So if you're using a computer that's in your workplace or a computer is in your home, if you're working from home, you can then uh, assign the IP address against that machine or a virtual private server if you want. Assign that IP address to your domain name server um, IPs 
and it, any time that you look at that it will port it will forward it to the ip address of the server where you're at you can look at that information as well i've done previous videos in regards to that so i'm not going to go on about that and go over that detail there this little bit of information here is to kind of do a little challenge against the um against certbot and uh let's encrypt okay so that will run the re re challenge there and this will show you where the user share nginx html files are blah 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 not that we're actually using that because below here we've got a bit to set up for our um reverse proxy okay now you can see here that i've got http colon forward slash you do stack now that that will come from here okay because we've got a container called you do stack okay and we're using the port 8069 so the magic of docker will kind of like force it through to the actual server ip address where that's working so if we put in local host colon 8069 it will go straight to there if we actually go ahead and put in our uh, domain name it will port forward it or sorry it will do a reverse proxy and call it to that um, domain name there that we've got set for the server name okay and that's all we need to do for that okay so below that we then we're then saying what ports that we want available for nginx well initially we want port 80 and port 443 okay and it depends on who do stack running so first off the database is the main thing so if the database isn't running then pg admin is not going to work and neither is udo and once you do stuff and running then nginx will run up and we always want it to run then below here we've got our promiscuous volumes because we need to just um let docker know that we are gonna be we are going to put those volumes there okay otherwise they're just being as um lost variables sort of thing by go past okay let's stop for that okay so now what we've got here um i've got created a folder called the database um we've got our nginx folder nginx config folder we've got our udo config folder so i've showed you where those config files are and we've got our docker files in there for nginx and udo containers to set up database is going to be blank and so is add-ons extra that's going to be blank as well okay so for us to get these run up then i'm just going to go back into my terminal so as you can see what i've got in it oh <laughs> let me just take, make, that, make that a bit smaller all of this what's listed here is all listed here in your uh, code builder okay so what I'm going to do now is run this up I'll just uh, take the get that down so you can see what's going on you need to make sure that you're inside the Udo folder or your your docker folder there you are so then put the compose up build okay the reason why i put that in there is because we've got some docker files and they need to be built okay so if i click that to run hopefully it will go ahead and create some stuff right, so it's creating a network and i've already gone off and built the udo stack so it's creating that sort of thing and then hopefully it's going to actually run up now it would normally take a bit longer than that to build the stuff but what we need to make sure is that everything's working fine right so the stack is accepting connect the database stacks accepting connections which is good and the last bit we need to see is the udo stack running okay once if you see database stack showing up here or you've got the nginx stack nginx container uh flagging up or maybe even your pg admin okay and then it comes back and it says it closes with error then there's a fault with that particular container right and the containers wouldn't be actually up and running now there's one way that we can actually see the containers up and running 
if I just go to change my directory to UD14 and then if I type in manual docker compose yes now this only works when you're actually in that particular folder yeah, yeah. it will shut down let me just copy that get that listen better so you can see there that your database container is up and running okay running on port uh, 5432 all right the nginx stack is running on 443 and port 80 the udu container or udu stack as i called it was running on 8069 and also there's a couple of other ports there as well that it would use and the pg pg admin 4 container is running at this port here you'll also see that it's got 443 in there but disregard that because this is the bit that we're interested in really okay so that's the port that that would be running on all right so that's now up and running now if i go over to my um web browser and i just type in local host 8069 Get that running up there you can see oops you can see here that it's just done a load of calls and stuff to the database uh, container all right so that now tells me that udo is now up and running all right which is cool all right there's no no errors no faults or anything at the moment so i can now go through i'm not going to use that password there okay i'm just going to use a cheap password password one two three four no i'm not so create our first database then i call it i'll just call it reporting at the moment we don't have an email set up on that so i'm just going to leave it as um just set up a basic name in there okay and i'll give myself a phone number as well set the username uh country language and i'm just going to add the demo data and then create a database let's save that then what you'll see because i've not done um docker dash compose up dash d and running it as a daemon you can actually see everything that's running so always for the first time i'm going to run it like this to see if i get any problems shirt flashing up okay so we know that it's working on look on port 8069 basically what it's doing now is it's adding some database tables so this is the actual udo server is talking to the database even though you don't see the database server running and there you go you know it, it's put us in there so it's getting all the information there for us okay um so it's got gone ahead and it's set up our default users hey which is cool so I'm happy with regards to that working. The other bit I need to look at is our PG for admin, PG admin four. Right now that takes a little bit longer to kick in. And you should be able to see, see that coming up very shortly. He says there we go pg admin stack so that containers just created itself okay um i mean i can show it oops i can show it full screen there and i've set that as my username to log in and my password was 
secret wasn't it so if i do that i just say don't save and that will enter there right so that's me now logged into pg admin but at the moment we've not got it connected to any of our udo databases all right so if i click on servers and then go create server i'm just going to say udo right and then don't worry about that bit at the bottom at the minute because you need to go to connections now here i need to put in the name of the container where the databases are held it's, it's held on database dash stack i'm running on that port maintaining the postgres database and then you put the username and passwords in which has come from what you're calling from here okay so you basically just go for that all that information there all right click on save and you can put that there. and then hopefully everything's going to work the way you want it to right so that's running there so you can if i look on the drop down list right you see postgres has appeared right and if i click on that one you do 14 which i've just created for this okay is is shown as well so let me just see if i can get into that let me just pull this out a little bit um let's just go down to users because i've created a user that's right there's other users in there because we've got database and i can view say in the first hundred rows you can see it's just pulling on that particular server container it's not even touching the udo server right um you can see there that we've got the demo portal public we've got some domain name um udo users in there okay and then you can look reflect or manipulate certain bits and pieces in the back end as a database administrator right listen about with too much of the udo um, database could potentially cause problems elsewhere so you need to be an absolute whiz at the 115 tables that we do 14 creates for you right so they're the two web base side of things that we need running and we can also see that the date we've got the database running the only problem we've got now is our domain name All right we're not able to connect just yet now if i just put popped in there um local host that's also going to take us to there because nginx is telling us to go that way right? so by just typing in local host that means that nginx is actually running okay i don't, don't know if it's going to show up on here there you go see the nginx stack we can actually see nginx working there now okay whereas if i just popped in local posts for 8069 because we will then be calling straight to the udo stack right back to local host we'll be able to see nginx is actually working and running right so we can see all three containers working there and we know the four containers working because we can see the database tables right so that's everything up and running there okay the next thing we need to do guys is get our, our little domain name up and running now there's a specific way that we go about doing this okay so if i create a new window okay let me just pop that over to that side obviously we want to try pulling it through https and it's just not connecting not a secure connection and it doesn't know where or how to connect okay um You, you, you should be able to do it. You just uh, do the recent history. There we 
regresar. There we go. Right, so Udi, Udi training DDNS is working as well. Right, so you can actually run it through the local host. If Nginx had gone down at all, then you could run it straight directly to the server itself, the Udi server, or you could run it through your domain name. Okay, but you can see there that it's not secure. So this is a bit that we're going to set up next. Right, so if I typed in Docker EXET dash it nginx stack and then type in bash now because it's already the root user that's in there that we've created now we know we create the root user the root user is coming from here okay so we've added our root user um i can go in there and do that and it says there root at that contain the number now just to, to see if we've got if we are in with nginx we can do this command here in nginx slash default and you can see there yeah this is the nginx server if it was any one of the other servers you wouldn't see this information okay which is cool now the great thing about um docker is is this now if i went into say nginx config file right and here i just put put in a little thing and said hello this is a test and then saved it okay this is on on my host side okay now you see that at the top of that it starts with server okay now if i just run that script again you can see it says hello this is a test so anything that you drop into the host folder will be replicated onto the container so it's kind of like got its own kind of private um tunnel set up between the container and the host machine which is which is all well and good so let me just save that back as it is now you can see there at the moment it's only set up with 19 lines that's because we haven't got um, the secure SSL information in there just yet. Right? But do bear in mind that when we actually run this up, we actually install Certbot, okay, as well. Now this I found that this is probably the easiest way to actually get it up and running without actually pushing it all through uh, Docker files and stuff um so you just go into your root container you just click it, up, and you just type in this uh, bot dash dash nginx as easy as that right um it says there cool uh do you want to installation nginx you want to need to authenticate your email address so i'll do that right that's my email address there and do you agree to the license agreement? Yeah, yeah. If you don't agree, then um, ah, basically, yeah, uh, cancel out. Would you be willing to share your information? I'm just going to say no. And here you can see that um, the main name, your domain name, you want to register as a HTTPS or secure. So you say, yeah, well. So it goes off, it obtains a certificate for your domain name. Okay, and I'm just going to set number two. Okay, so it's going to redirect to make all requests, redirect to secure HTTPS access. Sweet. Once you have done with that, 
it will be happy and say congratulations right and it tells you where your certificate chain is right and the keys have been created there as well right so that's all you need to do with that so you can just exit out of that oops right you can exit yourself out of that which i'm going to move now if i went back to my code now you remember before we had this default conf there and it was down to 19 lines look what's happened to it right i've not affected this in any way this bit's been added by circle okay that bit's been added by circle so if you wanted to run up this um docker um compose file again you'd need to come into the the default comp configuration delete this part out up to about line 19 okay you have to take take that bit out and then save it and then rerun it again okay to obtain a, a new certificate but it shows you there where your certificate information is because that's been added by certbot okay so now if I oops, come back here again. If I refresh this, you can see now that I've now got security set against my Indian domain. Okay, so that's basically guys everything that gets Udo up and running. Okay, with Docker. One useful bit of information make sure you set a master password in there as well okay guys so we can make it nice and secure <clears throat> and don't say anything just memorize it write it down somewhere and then you'll be able to go in and delete stuff okay guys um that's basically it i didn't want to go on any longer than that but i really have trimmed that video down somewhat and um, got it all up and running lovely all right so if at any time you wanted to tear it down um let me just go into here you're going to come on up as docker compose down okay and that will just tear down all of the um, docker containers and stuff and then you just have to go back in run the build again and then run the cert bot through the en nginx all right so hopefully guys you found this video much better and much sh shorter and not so much of a waste of time um but one thing i'd like to ask is if there is anything else you'd like me to talk about in regards to Odoo running in the community edition and if you're wanting to make some money as a business by using this particular version um, or you've got any burning questions on how to use any of the modules or how to get other modules installed uh, then please do let me know all right and then I'll, uh, I'll do some videos there for you um, now I'll, I'll take way to take down the older videos um but that i did have what one viewer come up saying why would you want to use docker or od now from a developer perspective and also um production i think it's far easier to use docker in that regard because it's is it ever ever expanding uh, it really depends on the, your host resources what you've got on your system and i think it's far easier to set up four applications just by writing a little bit of code you know so i mean it's not a lot you're only talking what 67 lines of code <laughs> and and then just running a command to run it all off and letting docker do do all the rest 
Um, I think it's brilliant, you know, compared to all what dependencies do we need to install and is it going to work at the end of it? How, how am I going to get my server secure? And so on and so forth. But you'll find that um, I do have this thing called Potana up and running. Right now, some of you might might want to go away and get this. All right. Um, you can see here it shows everything to do with uh, Docker. All right. You can see there that I've got eleven containers, three stacks, fourteen volumes, fourteen images. If I go onto my stacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's another video, guys. All right. Um, I can click on UD14. So whatever the name of the folder is, that's what the name of stack. And then you look inside there, Nginx, PG Admin, UDU, database. You can see it all up and running. And you can see the statistics. You can see what ports are open, and you can see who owns it, and what the image names are. Okay. So you think, okay, I'm running version all right, 4.5. There's a new image come out, so you need to look at getting that updated. All right, and there is ways of ways and means of doing that. But that's that's another another vid, and you don't have to change too much out. So your database is separate to your um. Udo server and your PG admin is separate to your Nginx server and it's so they're all on their own separate containers if I just clicked into say Nginx you can see where it is what it's doing you can see it's it sets up its own private gateway okay and it sets up its own private IP address as well so if I just copied that and pasted that into there, right, it's just going to come up with that same Nginx, okay? Um, yeah, it's a well bad request <laughs> coming up there. Okay, so it, it's not even picking it up from, from that particular area. But each one has got its own um, separate IP address. That's number four. And it's all running through this default network, yeah, which is actually bridged across to your host server. Right. So we, there we go. Right. So you have a, a bit of security in there, and they've all got their own MAC addresses as well. But it looks like they're all running on separate servers. In actual fact, they're not. Um, I I like Docker. I mean, it's it, it's good for me to test out bits of software and make sure that they're all working fine yeah by all means you, you can stick them on a, a dedicated server but I mean if you've got low resources you've got a low income and you are just starting up your business then basically you know what I'm showing you here today you can just sort of like go away hit the ground running the only thing that I paid for is my own time all right guys so um Anyway, thanks very much. I do hope you enjoyed the video. And it was a much better video than the two-hour session that I did previous. Because I did think it was actually quite long. Um, this one only kind of ran on for about 30 minutes or so. Um, with an extra bit of waffle on the end. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, please uh, consider voting in and subscribing. I don't do this as a, as a job anymore. I purely do it as a hobby. Because I drive coaches now, I'm no longer an IT manager, uh, but that's uh, my own choice, okay? But anyway, thanks very much guys, and um, happy coding, take care.